Happy American Thanksgiving, everyone! I'm still Canadian, so I've already had my turkey, but I made one for you, America. Here goes. Can we, like, put fireworks? It's gotta be big. I'm gonna try to be as American-themed as I can this episode, but when I start to feel guilty about that, I might wave my wand. And what does it say about me that I made, like, the full-on turkey cake for America and not Canada? I should be ashamed of myself. Here we go, everyone. Let's make a turkey cake. Are Americans gonna get mad at this? Probably. <laughs> Let's title this video, hashtag sorry. The first thing you need to do to make a turkey cake is bake a cake. To make this turkey cake, I baked one 10 inch, two nine inch, and one six inch round vanilla cake. You can bake it yourself. The recipe is in the description below. Now I need to assemble all of these cakes into one big cake and somehow carve a turkey. First, I'm gonna level my 10 and two nine inch cakes by cutting the hump off the top. And then I need to cut part of the circle off of each cake so that it will have a flat bottom because this cake is gonna stand on its side. Make sure to save these parts of the cake we've just cut off. We're gonna use them later for our wings and our legs. And now I'm gonna cut each one of my nine inch cakes in half horizontally so that I have four nine inch layers. Now I need to fill and stack my cakes. Don't forget to use simple syrup when filling your cakes to keep them nice and moist. The bottle that I use is available in the link in the description below. I don't think that was a good pitch right there. Like that was not an all American infomercial pitch. Here it goes. <clears throat> don't forget to use simple syrup to keep your cakes moist and delicious. You can buy my simple syrup bottle at howtocakeit.com. Just click the link in the description below. And while you're at it, don't forget to try out my recipe for my favorite Italian meringue buttercream. It's not American, but it's good. Try it out, link in the description. La, 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 la. I'm gonna begin by filling two nine inch layers on the bottom, then the one 10 inch layer, and then another two nine inch layers, and make sure to line up all the flat ends on one side, because that's actually gonna be the bottom of our cake. Now that my cakes are filled, I'm going to chill them for about 15 minutes to get the buttercream nice and set so I can start to carve. It's carving time, everyone. I, in all honesty, no joke, real cake talk right here. I was very nervous about carving turkey. I started to carve like a spine. No, the spine's back here. No, I think that's its belly up, is it? No, its belly is down, that's its back. That's why its arms are like this. It's like, oh, wait a minute. <laughs> no, those are its legs. You've been baking your turkeys upside down, Chet. I start by carving from the center out, trying to create the body of the turkey. And this is so difficult for me because even though it's technically symmetrical, it's not perfectly symmetrical. So I carve side to side to make sure I'm keeping it somewhat even. Without a model, it's really hard. You should have had your hat. They don't need a close-up of this hat. That hat is not coming back into the Hat of Cake Kitchen. If any of you want that hat, Leave a comment below, I'll send it to you. I'll pick someone randomly. The deal is you have to wear it to your Thanksgiving dinner and you have to post the picture of yourself in the hat on Instagram and tag me. Here's my handle. I want proof. I continue carving. I'm still carving. We need to talk about this for a while because it took me two and a half hours to carve the turkey. So what, what does that equal in how to cake at moments? Two and a half minutes. You're probably not even going to see two and a half minutes of carving. Oh, excellent. Make it look really easy, Jocelyn. When you present a turkey at Thanksgiving, especially at American Thanksgiving, it's got to be big. I decided my turkey needed to be more plump, so I actually pulled out a six inch round vanilla cake, leveled it, cut it in half, and then added the two halves to either end of my turkey, or either side, rather. and continued to carve and just made my turkey a bit rounder, a bit more supple. 
supple. <laughs> you know, plump. I used plump. I, I need a synonym for plump. I think succulent is what you were going for. Succulent! Remember those parts of the cake we cut off earlier? They're gonna come in handy right here because we're gonna carve two drumsticks and two wings. To make our two drumsticks, I start by using the leftover bits of cake from the two nine inch cake pans. That's not two, that's four. From the two nine inch cake pans. The drumsticks were actually kind of the easiest part to carve. I keep in mind what my cake looks like because the legs come up like this. You know, turkeys are like, oh no, that's their butt. I can't figure it out. And then I actually used my two remaining humps of my nine inch cake. I trimmed them down, I sandwiched them together with just a bit of buttercream, and then I carved two wings. And I didn't carve the whole wing, so I didn't carve, I don't have a wing. I didn't, I just carved like this part of the wing and the other part that sticks up. That's gonna be all fondant later on. This turkey still needs one very important part, the butt. I don't know what else to call it. I'm really sorry. It's like the flap, the under thingy. When you hollow out the turkey and you put your stuffing in, there's that bit. So I'm gonna create this back end with the leftover part of my 10 inch round cake. I used a six inch round cake pan to just sort of cut a six inch circle out of that or a half circle and sort of tapered it down. And that's the part that will be under our legs when they crisscross on top. You know what I mean? You'll get it, you'll get it once it's all done, but right now it's gonna look really weird. I honestly, I get so nervous making cakes like this because I am a template ruler loving girl and there is no turkey ruler and no turkey template. There's just pictures. Take your time, and good luck, everyone. I'm finally happy with the shape of my turkey cake. I'm gonna give it a nice crumb coat with my Italian meringue buttercream and pop it in the fridge to chill. Now give your two crumb, give your two crumb coats a crumb coat. <laughs> oh boy. Give your two drumsticks and your two wings a crumb coat and put them in the fridge with the rest of the turkey. Now that my crumb coated cakes are chilled, I'm gonna ice them one more time with my Italian meringue buttercream. The great part about icing this turkey cake is it actually doesn't need to be as smooth as all my other cakes because there's no such thing as a smooth turkey, is there? I mean, don't get me wrong, my icing job is good, because I'm Yolanda. Um, uh, uh, don't put that in. That will look snobby. Do not put that in. This is a Canadian warning. You're not the wrong flag. Now pop your turkey cake in the fridge. I'm doing way too much of this. It's not a sporting event. It's time to cover your turkey cake in fondant. <laughs> I'm glad that you all have such a good time here. I really am. I dyed my fondant a base color because I will be painting the turkey later on. I used gel food coloring as always in my fondant, some pink, some ivory, some burgundy, and what was the other one I used? Some yellow. Obviously if I paint on white, that won't deepen the colors I'm painting. So you wanna have a base color that sort of resembles the color you're going to paint it. And so I was looking for, well, cooked turkey skin, which they don't make in a food coloring gel. When I have my own line, I am promising you cooked turkey skin. And what was the other one I mentioned? Uh -huh. Hot Frankfurter. 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 I roll out my cooked turkey colored fondant and pick it up with my French rolling pin and lay it over the body of my turkey cake. I smooth my fondant all around, tuck it under, trim away the excess. We are gonna create texture on this turkey cake so that it looks like skin. All I did was use some shelf liner from the dollar store. 
I used a piece of this shelf liner to press into my fondant right after I covered my turkey cake just to create a texture. It works really well. You can just pick it up and press over and over again. It's amazing because you can get under the turkey and all around the turkey. It's very soft and very handy. Ladies and gentlemen, for only $0.99, you can get your turkey skin creator right here on How to Cake It. It's washable, durable, and very handy. Call now and you'll get two for the price of one. And we'll throw in a live turkey if you call in the next 60 seconds. I feel like it should have like a name, like the Turkey Skinator. <laughs> no, that's not good. <laughs> My wings and drumsticks also need fondant. I'm gonna roll out a piece of fondant and cover a wing and a drumstick at a time. And I'm gonna use my shelf liner once again to create texture. I place the body of my turkey onto my gorgeous platter and then I need to add the wings, but I need them to appear like they're a little bit under the turkey. So I actually lift my body a little and I laid my wings on the side and then dropped my turkey down. I position my two drumsticks alongside my turkey, squeeze the wings in, squeeze the legs in. We have a few accessories. Yes, accessories to make for this turkey cake. Uh, we need to make two bones that you see coming out of the drumsticks. And then we need to make the extra part of the wing. I decided to make my bones out of modeling chocolate because I like the base color and it's really easy to model. So I just take, I had about two ounces of modeling chocolate. I just formed bones. And then I created the rest of my wings with some extra fondant. I added a little bit of CMC just to stiffen it a little. And then, once again, with nothing but a picture, I modeled two wings. And then I'm gonna add the wings to the other part of the wings. I want them to like stick up. And I used a little bit more fondant to sort of smooth out the seams. And you don't have to worry about the seams because we're gonna use our shelf liner once again and press it into the seams to hide any seams. No, I said seams a lot. <laughs> you don't have to worry about the seams because we're gonna work out the seams and you won't see seams. It's seamless. <laughs> I'm gonna apply my bones to my drumsticks by sort of poking a hole into the top of the fondant of my drumstick and inserting the bone in there because it looks like, you know, the skin comes up around the bone. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm gonna show you how to roast your Thanksgiving turkey to perfection. And you won't even need an oven. You won't even need electricity. I'm gonna paint my turkey cake in two layers because I feel like turkeys have depth. I lied, three layers. So the first layer I'm using ivory and copper gel color mixed with a little bit of alcohol and I'm just gonna baste this whole turkey. After I let this layer of paint dry, the next layer I painted on was Buckeye Brown. Buckeye Brown! First I paint the bones because they get dark in the oven too with my Buckeye Brown and this time I don't add any alcohol to my food coloring because I don't want extra liquid on my modeling chocolate. It will just beat off. Just get into the grooves of the bones, make them look roasted. Buckeye Brown, a little clear alcohol and then I brushed that over. The first coat looked like a smoked turkey. It looked really good but adding the brown really deepened it. It looked like the turkey had been baking longer. It started to look really delicious and like turkey. Now, you know when you roast a turkey, you have to tie up the drumsticks with some twine. So that's what we're gonna do. All I did was roll out two thin long strips of modeling chocolate with my fingers, and then I twisted them together in my hands until it started to look like twine. And then I brushed on some dry cocoa, and then I brushed on a little water on top to get the cocoa in all the like grooves and really make it look like twine. And then I placed it over my two drumsticks, the bones of my two drumsticks. Now, a turkey doesn't bake perfectly evenly and it does get crispier in some areas. So I'm gonna recreate this using 
cocoa. I'm using Dutch processed cocoa, a nice dark cocoa, and a dry brush, and make sure that your turkey cake is dry. And then just sort of like stipple, I learned that from Martha Stewart. Stipple it on in areas where the turkey gets more crispy, like right on its back or up here. I love how this is my drumstick. <laughs> you don't want to add an even layer of cocoa. You want to add it here and there to just add depth. This turkey, this is a deep turkey. Turkeys are just like people that we roast and eat on Thanksgiving. <laughs> Every Thanksgiving turkey needs stuffing, am I right? This year's stuffing is pound cake, pecans, dried apricots, and dried cranberries. Yes, that's right, pound cake. I cut a few slices of pound cake and then cut those slices into cubes. And then I toss them in a bowl with some pecans, some dried cranberries, and some chopped dried apricot. And to hold it all together, I threw in a little bit of apricot jam and I just tossed it all together like a good stuffing. It's time to stuff some of this stuffing into my turkey. Happy Thanksgiving, America! A turkey roasted to perfection and stuffed with delicious stuffing. Serve this to your guests. Bake some extra stuffing on the side. They're gonna be stuffed. I'm all american out. It's tiring. <laughs> I'm used to being quieter. I'm so excited to carve this cake just like you would carve a turkey. I can't wait. Make sure it is nice and cold so you could cut some thin slices of turkey cake. Turkey cake makes you just as tired as turkey. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. If you want to see these videos a day before it hits YouTube, sign up for my mailing list and we will send it to you the night before. VIP. I feel like for some reason in the Thanksgiving race, Americans are winning. Us Canadians are just forgotten.